Well, what can I say? I did say week two was not going to be as interesting as the first weekend. I was kind of right, although we had a couple of interesting events that happened. So let's kind of talk about some that kind of stuck out to me, as I will adjust this lighting. All right, let's kind of look at this. The most important thing that stuck out to me this weekend, the Central Michigan versus Oklahoma State, especially the ending of it. Now, Central Michigan won on a Hail Mary pass, at, followed by a lateral. And Oklahoma State ended up losing the game and falling out of the top 25. However, this play shouldn't have even happened. Because there was an untimed intentional grounding. An un, there was some untimed down. It was fourth down, and they got a call for intentional grounding. See, if it's a, intentional grounding is always a loss of down, no matter what down it is. So if it's a loss of down, why would you be awarded an untimed down for committing an intentional grounding on fourth down? Clearly that should not have happened, and the NCAA really needs to reverse this call. Why should they? Because not only did it mess up the rankings as what they should be, it messed up Oklahoma State's chances of making the playoff if they were to win out. Because if Oklahoma State wins out, if they end up winning the Big 12 by winning out, not only are they going to kind of look at this loss as where to put them in the ranking, but they might not even get in if they went out. Because they will cause they will look at it and say, they lost Central Michigan. However, there was an Oklahoma State fan himself, still water sports cards. In one of his videos, he described that Oklahoma State should not even have been in that situation in the first place. That they played horribly with the most of the game. But I still think Oklahoma State should deserve to have the win. At least just put in like just at least put an asterisk next to their one and one record right now. Because in the slight chance they went out, because they had the talent to do so. If they went out, you have to put an asterisk with eleven and one. Because if they're honestly on the outside looking in, they won't get in. Like if it came down to a, let's just say a Cleb, a Clemson or a Florida State or something like that in Oklahoma State, they would put in the Florida State or the Clemson over them. At least just what my honest opinion would be. Depending on how it all shapes out. However, maybe Oklahoma State could find their way to win out run through the gauntlet that is the Big 12, basically go undefeated the rest of the year out, and they can win. They can win them all, get to the playoff. But we still can't count Oklahoma State yet because they're a very talented football team, and we saw them go on a run last year to win 10 straight games. Anyway, some other things that stuck out to me. The Arkansas TC game kind of stuck out to me a lot as well. I mean, that was just a crazy game, just a thrilling game to watch. It was kind of rough seeing Kenny Hill make those clutch throws because considering he used to play for A&M, but someone didn't like him. They suspended him. on, So he's no longer on the A&M team. He's now on TCU. However, I'm really impressed with how Arkansas played. I picked TCU in the game in my picks, as you saw last week. But if you didn't, now you know. Arkansas is not a team to be messing with. And if Arkansas can pull off some insane upsets against like A&M and Alabama, if they can pull off some upsets, they can make a run for New Year's Six. And I think Arkansas is not a team to mess with. So look for Arkansas to make some, to compete in some big time games really soon. Right. On to the Week 3 predictions. Now we've got some great matchups again this week. However, could these just be chalk picks, or will the will I pick some underdogs? I can't wait for you to find out my week three predictions. We've got some really wonderful matchups. I mean, these are just really wonderful. They're not as wonderful as they were in week one, but these are just wonderful matchups. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve matchups to cover and predict. Now, I kind of want to go out of order, kind of start off with some of the smaller matchups. 
as it's a great appetizer for all these great matchups. All right, let's kind of get one out of the way right here. North Dakota State versus number 13, Iowa. Now, based on the preseason, this was hyped up to be a great matchup. It'd be one to watch. And I think North Dakota State is going to be able to compete with Iowa. However, once we get toward, like, the second half, I think Iowa's going to pull away. I like the quarterback play of C.J. Beathard, and I like how Iowa's defense is being led by Desmond King, probably a future NFL corner. So I'm going to pick Iowa to win in this one. I don't think it's going to be an easy one for Iowa. I think Iowa's going to struggle a little bit toward the first part of the game. But I, oh, I see C.J. Beathard making some big throws in about the second and third quarter to have Iowa pull away. So I'm going to pick Iowa to win that one. This one could be really interesting, although some may think it's a blowout, but it could get interesting based on how it is. Number 25, Miami, Florida versus Appalachian State. Now we saw Appalachian State compete their hearts out against Tennessee and almost came up with that victory. Can Appalachia get some redemption by beating a top 25 team? Appalachia State has talent to beat teams. Remember, nine years ago, they beat Michigan in the big house. But they have a home game against Miami, Florida. Basically, what your keys are for this one is you got to take advantage of Miami mistakes because Miami is a team that will make mistakes at some point in a game. And plus, Brad Kai is probably a future NFL quarterback. Probably they're going to be the second quarterback taken in the 2017 NFL draft. I think Appalachian State's going to have a really, they're going to have a really good game getting to compete with Miami as well as they did with Tennessee. But unfortunately, I like the Hurricanes to to pull it off in the fourth quarter. I'm going to say it's going to be a close. I'm going to say I'm going to go with 31 to 28. I think it's going to be really close. I don't think Miami's going to have it in the bag right away. I'm going to say they're going to they get it right in the fourth quarter. All right, what should we talk about next? Okay, a night game. UCLA versus BYU. Now these are two teams that are really behind the eight ball right now. Not only to get into the playoff, which neither of those neither of these teams could really make the playoff in my opinion, but let alone a New Year's Six. Because BYU being a group of five team, if they can be, become the highest ranked group of five team, they can get to New Year's Six. And UCLA, they can still win the Pac-12 championship. I think it's going to be a great matchup. We're going to see Josh Rose on one side, Taysom Hill on one side. And BYU just lost a heartbreaker last week to Utah. They lost by one point after they went for two and failed to get the two-point conversion. I honestly think it's going to stick. I think it's going to stick through BYU's minds. I'm going to pick Josh Rosen to make some throws, some key throws to Kenneth Walker. I like Josh Rosen to actually get a running rushing touchdown as well. I like Usa to win this one. I think we're going to see a really high scoring game. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with 35 to 31. All right. So that's one, two, three matchups we've talked about. All right. The other night game. Number 11 Texas versus California. Now this is going to be a great matchup. I Anticipate this to be in the 50s and the low 50s, high 40s. I envision this to be a really offensive type of game. This is going to be a great matchup. Shane Bouchel, who is starting to evolve into a into kind of a dynasty quarterback for Texas, maybe the future for the Texas Longhorns. And they also have Tyron Soups, kind of a two quarterback system right now is what they're using. Several teams are trying quarterback two quarterback systems. Notre Dame tried it in week one against Texas. That didn't really work out, as Kaiser played most of the game anyway. Alabama kind of tried it in week one against USC. Georgia still has a two quarterback system, who we're going to talk about in just a second. I think Texas, Texas, the Texas defense will make a huge play in the fourth quarter to hang on and win. I'm going to say it's going to be 52 to 49. 
I think Davis Webb is going to make some huge throws in the game. I, I like Davis Webb to get a huge amount of statistics and a lot of touchdown passes, but I think Texas, I think the performance of Davis Webb will not be enough for Texas, will not be enough to get, get him past Texas. I'm going to pick him to win by four. four 52 to 49. Actually, that'd be three. Never mind. Right, next matchup, number 16, Georgia versus Missouri. Now, on paper, this doesn't look like a good matchup. But theoretically, it actually is. Because with Georgia, we have no idea who's going to start a quarterback. Whether if it's Jacob Eason, Eason, or Grayson Lambert. The big thing, how Missouri is going to be able to win this game. They have to do one thing. If they can stop the run, they will have a chance in this one. Because Georgia has two quarterbacks that are inexperienced that don't have a lot of great talent and qualities to survive a huge SEC-type game, especially on the road. Because Jacob Eason, being a, a true freshman, he doesn't really have a lot of cultural experience yet at all. Although he did pretty decent against North Carolina. But this is an SEC-type of game. I think Missouri's going to be able to contain Nick Chubb for a while, but I think... Toward the second half, I think Nick Chubb is going to kind of run right through that defense. I'm going to pick Georgia to win. Kind of kind of a close one. I'm going to say in the range of I'm going to say in the range of 38-28. I think Missouri is going to be able to score some points in this one. But I think Georgia will prevail in the end. All right, next one. USC versus number 7 Stanford. Now I personally like this matchup because it's a huge in-state rival. And it's huge in-state rivalry game with two teams in California. However, I like Christian McCaffrey to be Christian McCaffrey. I'm going to pick Stanford to win this one. A lot of NFL talent on this team, especially future NFL prospects are in this game. It's going to be a great one to watch, but I think Christian McCaffrey is going to steal the show. I like Stanford to win 45-31. to 31. I think USC is going to score some points. I think Juju, Juju Smith-Schuster is going to get two touchdowns in that game. But I like Stanford to win. All right, number 17, Texas A&M versus Auburn. Now, Auburn is opened up as a four-point favorite in this matchup. What I think, like the Las Vegas odds kind of did, is they kind of thought about what happened last year as Auburn pulled off a magnificent upset in Aggieland last year. But this is a different year. You have Trevor Knight, who is starting to evolve into a great quarterback, who has the potential to lead the Aggies to maybe an SEC championship game berth if they can get past the gauntlet that is the SEC. And you got Keith Ford, who's a transfer out of Oklahoma, as well as Trevor Knight. And you also have Christian Kirk and Josh Reynolds, who are really starting to get their game going. Especially after that 6 7 nothing victory for Prairie View A&M. Yes, it's Prairie View A&M, but still, it just takes one it takes one good game to get things going, get the confidence, the momentum going. But I'm going to pick Texas A&M to win this game. I think it's going to be really close, as Texas A&M and Auburn is usually always close. At least it has been the last three years. However, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Auburn actually won, considering it's in Auburn and the way Auburn was able to compete with Clemson, contain Deshaun Watson, more than what I thought they were going to. It really makes me nervous as an A&M fan. So I'm just going to pick A&M to win, but I will say this. If Auburn pull, if Auburn wins and pulls off this technical upset, I won't be surprised at all. All right, next matchup. Oh, many of you are really looking forward to this one. Number 22, Oregon versus an unranked Nebraska team. I'll admit Nebraska should be in the top 25. They have a lot of talent this year, I'll admit that for sure. But this is the, finally Nebraska's chance to play a real team. Yeah, Nebraska's 2-0. You played Fresno State and Wyoming. Congrats. Now you get to play a team like Oregon. Oregon has a lot of speed on their team. However, Oregon's kind of taken a step back. But still, but still, Oregon has a lot of talent on the team. Just think about it. Like Royce Freeman's really talented. Speed. A lot of speed on defense and a lot of speed on offense for Oregon. Can the black shirts contain the speed of Oregon? I hate saying it, but I think they can. 
would have picked Nebraska to like literally win in overtime. I'm gonna say like I'm gonna say we're gonna see a fairly high scoring game. I'm gonna say we're gonna see about 45-38 in overtime. Mark that one down, Nebraska fans. You're welcome. It pained me to do that. All right, on to the big matchups now. Let's start with the one that is 2:30 sharp on CBS. Number one, Alabama versus 19, Old Miss. Old Miss is one of those teams buying the eight ball right now. Along with Oklahoma, we're going to talk about in a minute. The loser of Florida State and Louisville, who we're going to talk about in a minute as well, will also be behind the eight ball. Whoever loses that one between Florida State and Louisville will have to beat Clemson to have a chance in getting to the college football playoff. All right. So basically in this matchup, I see it like this. I see it being the first true road test for Jalen Hurts and Alabama. Sure, you still got Calvin Ridley, O.J. Howard, Eddie Jackson. You still have all those talented players from last year's championship team. However, when the main when the main source of your team right now, being the quarterback and the running back, with not having any road game experience, especially in a hostile environment like Oxford, Mississippi, it's going to be tough. So, for Old Miss, <coughs> for Old Miss to have a chance in this game, they have to take advantage of the first quarter. They got to get out to a big lead. And have the and have the mentality of never wanting to look back, because as you've seen in the first two games of Alabama, they have struggled in the first quarter. They didn't score at all in the first quarter against USC. They struggled throughout the first part of the first quarter against West Kentucky. Against West Kentucky, my, may I add. So if Ole Miss wants to have a chance in this game, they got to do what they kind of did against Florida State. They got to take advantage of the first quarter and first half. And then you got to play 60 minutes as well. So if Ole Miss wants to win this game, they have got they've got to take advantage of the first quarter and part of the second and the first half of the second quarter. And then you got to play 60 minutes. So it'd be best for Ole Miss to kind of get a lead early, kind of have something to look upon and hold that. However, I just think there's too much time in Alabama. As much as I don't want to do it, I've got to pick Alabama to win this one. I think it's going to be really close. I think Ole Miss is going to. I think Ole Miss is going to really push Alabama, especially Jalen Hurts and Bubba Stradling or Bo Strang, whatever that Alabama's running back name is. The guy that's not Derrick Henry. I think they're going to push those two guys, especially. But I like Alabama to pull it off in the end. I'm going to say probably a last second field goal. So I have a lot of close matchups this week because these matchups will be so good. These are almost like crapshoots in a way. But I'm going to pick Alabama to win. I'm going to say we're going to have an average score. I'm going to say 27-24. All right, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 down, and 3 more to go. All right, let's do Michigan State versus Notre Dame. Number 12, Michigan State versus number 18, Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame is behind the eight ball with losing to Texas on opening weekend. Michigan State is not behind the eight ball. However, if they lose this game, they are nearly out of the college football playoff contention. Because let's look at Michigan State's schedule for the rest of the year. I should have really pulled this up. They play Wisconsin next week. Then BYU on the 8th, then Michigan on the 29th, then Ohio State on the 19th. If you can see, Michigan State does not have the potential to win those four games. In fact, they're probably going to be the underdog in at least two of them. I'm going to pick Notre Dame to win this one. However, Michigan State will not necessarily be behind the 8-ball, but I think they will be nearly out of the cultural playoff contention. Because, let's just face it, Ohio State kind of has a lot of talent, and Wisconsin's got a lot of talent, so it could come down to those two teams for the playoff. So I'm going to pick Notre Dame to win this one. I think we're going to see a highly defensive type game. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I think we're going to see about maybe a 21-17 to game. 
I think we're going to have a low-scoring game in the first half. Then in the second half, it's going to heat up a little bit. So I'm going to pick Notre Dame to win in the end, 21-17. All right, two matchups left. Both these games are going to be really highlighted games for most people. These are the two games of the week. Literally a coin toss. Heads, we're going to talk Florida State versus Louisville first. Tails, Ohio State, Oklahoma. It is tails. All right. Number three, Ohio State versus number 14, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is one of those many teams that are behind the eight ball right now. And it's a must win for them. And Ohio State, sure, they struggled in the first part of games, but they tend to pull away and dominate in the second half. However, it's just Bowling Green and it's just Tulsa. So this is another team that has a huge road test this weekend. Florida State's got a road test. Miami, Florida road test. Oregon road test. Alabama, Texas, and Michigan State, Georgia. Texas all road test this week. So in the end, though, I like JT Bear to make the plays. We do have JT Bear versus Baker Mayfield. J JT Bear, a dynamic quarterback. Dual threat, Baker Mayfield. He can be a dual threat at times, but he is he is a fearless gunslinger. I think we're going to see a bunch of points in this one. However, I like Ohio State to win this one 45-42. to 42. I personally think Oklahoma needs to clean up what they saw from Houston. they got to let that go and they got to focus on the now. The defense can't take any of those stupid penalties. And the secondary has to improve. And I think that's what's going to cost Oklahoma at the end is one bad play in the secondary. I think that's what's going to cost Oklahoma this game and a spot in the college football playoff. All right, final matchup. We're at 22 minutes here, so I'm going to make this quick. Number two, Florida State versus number 10, Louisville. Now, everyone has been hyped up on Lamar Jackson, the Louisville quarterback. 13 total touchdowns in two games. However, he's played Charlotte and he has played Syracuse. So this is his first true test of the year against a real Florida State defense who is supposed to have not is supposed to have one of if not the best defenses in all of college football. We saw how Florida State's defense dominated the second half against Old Miss. However, the key for Louisville in this one is it's going to be Lamar Jackson, really. So Lamar Jackson has got to make some plays early in the game to get momentum for his side. And the defense has got to contain Dalvin Cook. you got to put pressure on DeAndre Francois. However, in the end, though, I like Florida State to pull off this victory. I'm going to say Florida State wins this by a touchdown. I'll go with 34-28. And there are your week three cultural predictions. So, for a review, I like Texas over California, UCLA over BYU, Stanford over USC, Ohio State over Oklahoma, Georgia over Missouri, Notre Dame over Michigan State, Texas in versus Auburn, over Auburn, Alabama over Ole Miss, Nebraska over Oregon. Miami, Florida over Appalachian State. Iowa over North Dakota State. Florida State over Louisville. So there are your week three cultural predictions. That is going to do it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Share this with all your friends. I'm sorry this is going to be nearly a 25 minute video. There was just 12 matchups to cover. Anyway, I will see you next time. Have a great day everybody. I'll see you in my next video. Peace out.